pairs shown here demonstrate the effect of suffixation on the correct selection of the accentuated syllable. Each word in English, each word that has a definition, such as compatible and compatibility, must have one, exactly one, accentuated syllable. If the word has a definition, it must have one and only one accentuated syllable. The, sil the syllable which is accentuated is determined by the suffix that the word happens to bear. So in this case, it's very simple. Between the root and the suffix, you have this connecting vowel. The rule is very simple. Always put the accent on the syllable preceding the connecting vowel. So that gives you compatible. Similarly, the related word compatibility has this suffix connected to the rest of the word by this vowel. This is a connecting vowel too. So you get the accent right before compatibility. Compare the two. Compatible. Compatibility. We notice we notice the same behavior in the other examples. The well-known suffix ate is connected to the root by this connecting vowel, giving you intermediate. Similarly, mediation. Here we have something slightly different. This English word is in fact created, has been created from two Greek words. In, in our analysis, this is like a compound. Compound pronunciation means put the accent somewhere on the first member, the first word that forms the compound, not on the second. So as it happens, the first syllable of that first word has the accent and it gives us hemisphere. The related word spherical is pronounced the way it is because between the suffix and the root, you have this connecting vowel. So of course it's pronounced spherical. Let's pronounce them together. Hemisphere. Spherical. A slightly different situation occurs in the first member of the following pair. In the Americas, this word is analyzed as a compound. And so we pronounce it controversy. However, to some people, the word is an unanalyzed whole with the, with the suffix y, which is like the, the y in the word photography. When you add that y, you get the abstract noun. And the usual rule is to put the accent on the second syllable before the suffix. And so you will hear people in other countries 
pronounce this word as controversy. You don't really need to worry about that. Just don't be too shocked if you hear it. In Canada and elsewhere in the Americas, the uncontroversial pronunciation is controversy. Notice that in the related adjective, we get something like this the situation we had before with the other words. Here's the suffix, and here's the connecting vowel. So of course that gives us controversial. We have another interesting and more common exceptional situation with the following pair. Notice that this suffix here follows a rule or enforces a rule, depending on how you look at it, which says that the accent must fall not on the first before, but on the second syllable before the suffix. So if you count the suffix as zero, this would be one, and this would be two. And that gives us preliminary. Notice, however, that we have this word, which is a little bit curious. Here's the suffix, count that as zero, and this is the first syllable before, and this one the second before. But the word is pronounced supplementary. Why is that? The reason is because, the reason is that sometimes English makes a, distinguish, a distinction between heavy and light syllables. This here, L-I, is a light syllable. It's pronounced li. It's not pronounced li or li. Those would be heavy syllables. But li, consonant, short vowel, is considered a light syllable. But look what we have here. This is consonant, light vowel, consonant to us. In our minds, that adds up to a heavy syllable. So the heavy syllable counts as two light syllables. So here in the word preliminary, in fact, what you had was the suffix requiring that the accent fall on the second of two previous light syllables. But here in supplementary, the syllable right before the suffix is a heavy syllable. And so that's why it takes the accent. Not here, but here. Listen again. Preliminary. Supplementary. The following material is intended to demonstrate what I mean by parsing. Parsing is the division of a word or an expression into subparts or the subunits. There we go. So Here's our first example. The Northern Hemisphere. The Northern Hemisphere. What you see here are the dictionary accents. Northern Hemisphere. But what you hear in addition is The extra accent, which indicates that 
the entire structure is one of modification. Here's the modifier and here's the modified element. So the rule is put the extra accent, add an accent to the accentuated syllable of the word which happens to be the modified element. So it gives you the northern hemisphere. The northern hemisphere. This can become more complicated. All of this here is the modifier. Before the modifier was just northern. But now the modifier is northern and southern. Notice that northern and southern is an X and Y structure, X particle Y structure. So this is a mistake here that I'm going to correct. X is a X particle Y modifying structure. So all of this is X and this is Y in an XY type modification. Like if this were X northern, this would be Y hemisphere. This is just ordinary modification. But we're here we have a more complex modifier in the modification structure. Now we have northern and southern modifying hemispheres together. So that gives you, first of all, northern and southern, northern and southern. X and Y, X and Y structures are pronounced like this. Northern and southern. But now, this X and Y construction is used as a modifier of hemispheres. Well, what happens is interesting. The accent shifts. It goes here. Northern and Southern. hemispheres. In other words, the X particle Y construction changes accent, accent pattern. Instead of becoming, instead of being simply northern and southern, it's northern and southern, like ladies and gentlemen, you get northern and southern. because now it is part of this construction, which gives us all together the Northern and Southern hemispheres. There's a reason for this. In English, we cannot have accents following each other, rising, 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 and rising. We can't do that. Only two can follow each other, rising. In other words, we cannot have Northern and Southern hemispheres, we can't do that. That's we up, down, up, down. So that's why the accent, the accent, the accent pattern of Northern and Southern must change. Northern and Southern, Northern and Southern hemispheres, the Northern and Southern hemispheres. We have a similar situation in the following example. First, we have simple compounding. Now, you have to know, unfortunately, you simply have to know that this is analyzed as a compound. Solar 
is, of course, an adjective. But we don't, well, in the Americas at least, we don't generally refer to the solar system. We refer to the solar system. In other words, we, we analyze this. We analyze this as a compound. So solar system, and that's what the words look like with their dictionary accent, but we'll want to, want to add an extra accent to the accentuated syllable of the first word. Now, here we've got modification. We have a system, and that system is spherical. Notice here that we had a system, but we couldn't say that the system was solar. That makes no sense. We use the word solar to say what kind of system it is, and that's probably why we pronounce solar system as a compound. But here, we've simply got a spherical system. A spherical system. This is where the dictionary accent goes. It's also where the extra accent goes. A spherical system. Now, what happens if we complicate things a little bit. Suppose we have a compound, but that compound is modified. Well, we already know that solar system is the pronunciation of that compound. And what is that solar system like? Well, if you want to describe that solar system, we find that it's spherical. So, how do we do this? We know that this here takes an extra accent so that we know that we have a, a compound, solar system. And we know that this here, the modifier, should be lower than whatever it modifies. So that gives us, in fact, a spherical solar system. What happens is the system, the accent in system, is lost, or let's say strongly reduced. So if we pronounce the whole thing together, we get something like middle, high, low. At least that's what it sounds like. It gives you something like a spherical solar system. Solar system. A spherical solar system. A spherical solar system. Now, if we come back to the original compound, we hear something similar, but it's not quite as obvious. We get solar system. You can still hear the accent slightly here solar system but here you really can't detect it solar system spherical solar system a spherical solar system now suppose we have two modifiers before the compound here's the compound solar system so let's mark the extra accent. There, solar system. And we know that because that there are modifiers coming before it, we know that the characteristic dictionary accent of system is probably going to be muted. So solar system becomes solar system, solar system. And that's why we have spherical solar system. Suppose we have another modifier modifying the compound, which is already modified. Well, 
very simple. We, we have no difference here between these two. We have a distant spherical solar system altogether. A distant spherical solar system. See, this is actually a pretty easy game. Let's look at some other interesting ones. This one's cool. You have these two words, and you know that this here modifies this, and you know the positions of the dictionary accents. So independently, that gives you compatible partners. But we don't like pronouncing constructions in a robotic fashion compatible partners that really is not the way you want to speak english it becomes difficult to understand we have the signal in english that makes it clear that this is a modification structure because the, there's an extra accent that goes on the characteristic dictionary accent of the second word. So let's try that. What does it give you? Compatible partners. They are compatible partners. Those two are compatible partners. So that's ordinary modification. Now what if we have a slightly more complex modification? Suppose the modifier compatible is itself intensified with another modifier. So there are two modifiers, but the two modifiers are not both modifying partners. Ideally, is modifying compatible. And all of that, ideally compatible, is modifying partners. Well, what this normally would give you is the following. Ideally modifies compatible. So compatible would be higher. I mean, the accentuated syllable of compatible would be more accentuated. And then all of this modifies this. So this here should be higher than all of this. So let's do that. Partners. So what that should give you is ideally compatible partners. Well, we can do that. But you see, there's a problem. In English, we don't like the sound of steadily rising accents like that. Ideally compatible partners. We don't like that. So what we'll do is we will invert something here. This will be less accentuated than this. Let me show you what I'm talking about. There. I hope that's clear. Let's make that there. So what you have instead, instead of rising, 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 what you have is something like middle, low, high. Or if you prefer, let's say high, less high, <laughs> an extra high, or put it another way if you like, extra high, high and extra extra high. Well, it doesn't really matter how you do it as long as this here inverts. So the ultimate effect is something like middle, low and high. So instead of pronouncing ideally compatible partners, which we could do when we're speaking very slowly, 
But in the normal, at the normal rate of speech, we don't like the sound of that. And we invert the relative accents of these two. So that gives us ideally compatible partners. Those two are ideally compatible partners. Or there's another way we can do this. We can level the accents like this. Sorry, that's not quite level, is it? Okay, so we can level the accents like this so that all of this here, these two modifiers, are lower in accent than the modified element. So that gives you ideally compatible partners and ideally incompatible. Sound like they're accentuated to the same height. How about when you have a modification structure like this one here? Compatibility, the abstract noun, modified, or you could say intensified, by the adjective ideal. So that gives you something quite simple. Ideal compatibility. Say it after me. Ideal compatibility. We can also intensify compatibility with the subjective evaluating adjective remarkable. We think, we think that something is remarkable, and so we put it into a modification structure. Remarkable is the modifier. In this case, it's an intensifier. So the intensifying modifier, remarkable, is added to compatibility. And that gives you remarkable compatibility. So far, nothing special. Now, what if we do this? Suppose we modify compatibility with a complex modifier. The modifier is complex because it's, it's intensified. The modifier is actually ideal, but the modifier itself is intensified. So the modifier is modified. Well, <clears throat> we can do, we can do what we did here. We had a choice, remember? We, make, we could make this one middle, this one lower, and this one high. We could do it like that. Remarkably ideal compatibility. Repeat after me. Remarkably ideal compatibility. If we're speaking very slowly, we might pronounce remarkably ideal compatibility. Middle, sorry, low, or let's say lower, then middle and higher. But we don't normally speak so slowly. If we're speaking at a normal rate, we don't like low, middle, and high, like remarkably ideal compatibility. We don't like that. That doesn't sound good. We will have, as in the previous example, we'll keep these two at the same level, or we'll have this one middle, this one lower, and this one highest. So you could have remarkably ideal compatibility, or you could have Let's do it here. Keep both modifiers in the same level. We could have remarkably ideal compatibility. Repeat after me. Remarkably ideal compatibility. Repeat after me. Remarkably ideal compatibility. Let's look at another interesting example.
All right, well, this is easy, or it looks easy enough. We have an adjective and a noun. Well, this could be one of two things. We could, we could interpret this as a modification structure. We could pronounce it as the intermediate level. The intermediate level. That simply means that we're talking about the level which is intermediate. But it's possible to reinterpret this as a compound. In other words, in our minds, this can become the name of the level. I have no better way of explaining it than that. And in that case, we would say that the modification structure is reinterpreted as a compound. And so we would pronounce it as the intermediate level. Now let's keep that interpretation. The intermediate level. Let's show that we understand this to be a compound. The intermediate level. Now, we could modify that compound because in the intermediate level, I know this from teaching English for a while, we have early intermediate level and late intermediate level. And in between the two, we have the ordinary intermediate intermediate levels. Well, we don't normally say that, but I guess that's what it would mean. So how do we pronounce this? Here's the modifier and Here's the compound. Now, normally, the modifier should be lower than the modified element. But the modified element is already high and uh, higher and lower. So how do we do this? Simple. We assume that every word in English Every word in English that has a definition must also have one dictionary accent or one accentuated syllable. Now, if the word itself only has one syllable, well, that syllable is accentuated in the sentence or in the construction. Now, late must be lower than intermediate level. So that could give us something like late intermediate level, late intermediate level, where late and level are on the same level. They have the same accent, the same level of accent. Well, that's possible. But we prefer to lower the accent of the second member of the compound. So the contrast in accentuation is very clear and uh, very strong, giving us the late intermediate level, level, level. Notice that these two syllables have no difference in, in level, in tone. An accent level of accent anymore. So it gives us the late intermediate level, the middle, high, low, middle, high, low. Repeat after me. The late intermediate level, Now, what if this complex that we had in the previous example were to serve as a modifier 
for, uh, let's say, the word course. Which course are you taking? Well, I'm taking <laughs> this one, the late intermediate level. Well, what do we do now? We already have the accentuation worked out. The late intermediate level. And you'd be surprised at how simple the longer construction is. It gives you the late intermediate level chorus. All of this here will be on the same level of accentuation. So let's indicate that. The late intermediate level course, the late intermediate level course, late intermediate level, the late intermediate level, the late intermediate level course. This is more or less middle. This is higher. And all of this here is lower. The late intermediate level course. We can make it even more complex or complicated, depending on how you see it. Complex or complicated, really, it's not hard. Let's do this as we, let's analyze this as we had done above. Late, intermediate, late intermediate level, level. Accent is lost there. So that gives you middle, high, and low. Okay, well, that's, that's the compound. Here's the modified compound. Now suppose all of this is modifying not a single word, but a more complex word, a compound. Well, first of all, how do we pronounce the compound? Well, it's a course of English. So that gives us an English course, an English course. That's how the compound is pronounced. Now, remember the general rule. The modifier will be lower than the modified element. That general rule doesn't change, but we might have to change what's going on inside the modifier. So we want all this here, this modifier, to be lower than, lower than the compound, or at least lower than the highest accent in the compound. What does that give us? Well, I hear something like the late intermediate level English course, the late intermediate level. This doesn't really change. The late intermediate level English course. It could be the late intermediate level course or the late intermediate level English course. So put more accent here to make sure to ensure that the modifier with all of its elements is lower than the modified element. The late intermediate level English course. Now, if I were to speak more quickly, all of the accentuated syllables in the modifier will sound the same. And of course, it'll be lower than the first syllable of the first element of the compound. So that would give you, let's do it together. The late intermediate level English course. Okay. I make all of these the same. 
just have to be lower than this one here. If I speak more slowly, I will get the late intermediate level English course. I'm taking a late intermediate level English course. Now, if we speak at a normal rate, those complications disappear. And we simply will say, the late intermediate level English course. I'm taking a late intermediate level English course. Let's, let's look at another one here. Competent. Mediation. That's an ordinary modification structure. And so we know that mediation mediation must be higher than the modifier competent. So it gives you competent mediation. Now what if we have mediation modified twice? In other words, here we've got two modifiers and they both directly modify mediation. All right. So they are on a par with each other. Very simple. Competent, impartial mediation. It's as simple as that. Competent, impartial mediation. Let's see what mischief we can make with the following example. Well, the following example is mischievous indeed. All right, let's start here with this one. A raging controversy, simple modification. Well, we know that this is the modified element and this is the modifier. So let's put the extra accent here. and pronounce it, a raging controversy. Now, we've got something a little bit more complex. Now we've got tariffs and raging controversy and a particle, in this case, the preposition. But it's not just a controversy about tariffs. Well, that would be simple enough. a controversy about tariffs. What we have is a raging controversy about tariffs. In other words, the modifier is itself modified. Or, well, I wouldn't call this a modifier exactly. Let's just call it X, okay? Because it's X in the X particle Y construction. So we have X controversy modified by raging. And all of that, all of that is the first member of the X particle Y construction. How do we do that? A controversy about tariffs. Well, that's easy enough because we have middle, low, and high. But what about if controversy is itself modified? Well, we could do it in two ways. We could keep these two, raging and controversy, at the same level of accentuation. And that's what we will do. That's exactly what we will do when we're speaking rapidly, or let's say at a normally rapid speed, rate of speech. So at the normally rapid rate of speech. So that would be something like a raging controversy about tariffs. But if we're reading the news or enunciating carefully, uh, we might not do that. Now remember the rule. This here is the modifier of this. So that should give you raging controversy. And all of this is supposed to be lower than this because it's an X of Y construction. 
right? So it should give you lower, middle, and higher. A raging controversy about tariffs. But as I mentioned before, we don't like doing that. Going up, up, up. We don't like that. So we'll probably invert things like this. Giving us a middle, low, and high. A raging controversy about tariffs. A raging controversy about tariffs. That's if we're reading the news or if we're speaking and enunciating very, very clearly. But in real life, of course, we don't bother with all of that. We just make sure that X is lower than Y. So that X is middle, particle is low, and Y is higher. So a raging controversy about tariffs. What if we make it more complex? Complex and complicated. Here, let's keep these two so we can see them, compare them with each other. Well, now it's not just tariffs. Tariffs is just a noun by itself. But instead, it's import tariffs. Import tariffs. A raging controversy about import tariffs. Oh, how do we do this? How do we read this without sounding like robots? That's very important because you can't. You can't simply read all of these with the same level of accentuation. That sounds robotic and we don't like that. It doesn't sound natural. Now here, obviously, I've put the dictionary accents, but then you need to put the the extra accents. I'd like you to stop, stop the, the clip here and try to put the extra accents in this construction. Go ahead. All right. Did you stop the clip and try to add the extra accents yourself? Let's see how well you did. I like to start with the compounds. Those don't change as much as other words, other constructions. So we have import tariffs. Let's make that one heavily accentuated. Notice that we say tariffs when the word is by itself. But when the word tariffs is in the compound, import tariffs as the second member, Import tariffs, well, this accent here, this dictionary accent here, is leveled, it's leveled out. So we have import tariffs. We'll put them together and you get import tariffs. Well, then over here, we've got our modification structure. You've got a raging controversy, a raging controversy. And finally, the entire structure is an X particle Y structure, where this here is X, and this here is Y, and this here is the particle. Particle's a preposition. Well, with an X particle Y construction, y must be higher than x. And the particle, of course, has to be low. So I would say, let's do it this. Let's do it like this. Let's make it really obvious. You get a raging controversy about import tariffs. Say it with me a raging controversy about import tariffs. Now, 
as it often happens, the first part of the construction will often level out in the speech when it's of normal speed. So you might hear a raging controversy about import tariffs. You might. But you're more likely to hear a raging controversy about import tariffs. In other words, the differences of levels of, accentu of accentuation inside the modifier, or of x, and if it's x of y, will probably level out. Repeat it with me. A raging controversy about import tariffs. A raging controversy about import tariffs. So that in fact, you get middle, high, and low. Let's do this with another kind of example. Here's simple modification, controversial, figure. The, the dictionary accent of figure must be augmented, must be increased like this. So, the modification structure is quite simply a controversial figure. Say it with me. A controversial figure. Now suppose we take that modification structure and turn it into the X member of an X particle Y construction. Remember the rule. X has to be sort of middle, the particle has to be really low, and the Y has to be higher. Well, that shouldn't be too difficult. News takes a dictionary accent. In the news, in the news. And what do we have? The X, which is middle, N, which is low, and the news, which is high. Let's go at normal speed. Let's not speak too slowly or too carefully. At normal speed, that gives you something that's really very simple to pronounce. A controversial figure in the news. A controversial figure in the news. Say it with me. A controversial figure in the news. Now, of course, if we're speaking very slowly, we have to distinguish the pronunciation of the accentuation of controversial and figure. But we won't have controversial figure anymore. That's what we had here. What happens if we try to put it here? It gives us something kind of strange. A controversial figure in the news. That's kind of bizarre. We, we could do that, but it's kind of bizarre. As I mentioned before, when we have this situation, we like to reverse the accent, the accent pattern in that first member, the X in this case, right? Giving us a middle, low, high, a controversial figure in the news. He happens to be a controversial figure in the news. Say it with me. He is a controversial figure in the news. Let's make it even worse, <laughs> even messier. You'll be surprised that in fact, this isn't that difficult. Let's start here with y. Remember, this is an x particle y structure. n is the particle, it takes the least accent. 
this part here should be middle, and this part here should be highest, highest of all. Well, first of all, this is a modification structure. International news. Let's make sure that that's really clear. International news. Fine. And here we've got a controversial figure. All right, let's do that too. Modification structure. Controversial figure, like up here. He's a controversial figure. And here, he's a controversial figure. Where is he a controversial figure? He's a controversial figure in international news. Well, we can pronounce it that way. We have no problem pronouncing it that way because X, which is controversial figure, has to be lower than Y, international news. But we have this alternation of up and down, up and down, so that we don't need to invert these two accents anymore. And it gives us, I'm going to read this very slowly. Please repeat after me. He's a controversial figure in international news. And if we're reading at normal speed, of course, these accents here will level out. In fact, all of the accentuated syllables here will appear on the same level, just as long as they're lower than the level of this word here. So at normal speed, that will give you, he's a controversial figure in international news. He's a controversial figure in international news. Now, I think I may have misread this earlier. So I'm going to read it again as though I were trying to be very clear, enunciating very slowly and carefully. Repeat after me. He's a controversial figure in international news. Fine. Let's look at a couple more. Here we have the word preliminary, which we saw earlier on this page. And we're talking about results like laboratory results, hematology results perhaps. And we talk about preliminary results, results. Now, preliminary results is a modification structure. So let's indicate that. Preliminary results. Let's make it even clearer. Preliminary results. I got my preliminary results. Well, suppose that entire modification structure is itself modified. Notice the modifier, satisfactory. And then we just add a note here. O-R-Y is usually, usually has the effect of causing the accent, the dictionary accent to come on the second syllable before itself. Like in, let's compare it. Here, this word is pronounced oratory. Suppose that the suffix counts as zero. The first syllable before is one, 
And the second syllable before is to. Oratory. But there's something that you should notice. That first syllable before, ra, ora, oratory, is what we call a light syllable. Consonant, light vowel. So the accent will go on the previous syllable, the second syllable before the suffix, as per the rule, oratory. So why don't we have satisfactory? Because here's the second syllable before the suffix. Well, the reason is that the syllable immediately before the suffix is a heavy syllable. So that's, in this case, the heavy syllable in this case is composed of a consonant, a vowel, and a consonant. The consonant is short, but it, there's a vowel. So it gives you satisfactory. In other words, it counts as two. So here, oratory. Put the accent on the second syllable before. And the first syllable before is a light syllable. But satisfactory, put the accent on the syllable right before because it's a heavy syllable. All right, close that parenthesis and forget about that for a moment. Satisfactory modifies all of this. It doesn't modify preliminary. So it's not satisfactory is not an intensifier modifying preliminary. Satisfactory is a modifier of all of this construction here, preliminary results. So how do we pronounce that? Well, we have two ways. Remember that we don't like the accent sound like this, I'll demonstrate. Okay, so here we have high, higher, and highest, giving you something like satisfactory preliminary results. We don't like that sound very much. It's not impossible, but it's not popular. If we want to speak slowly and carefully, what we'll do is we will invert these first two, which are lower than this one here. So let's do that. Uh, let's take this down to... Mm -hmm. There, got it. So if you're speaking very slowly and carefully, you might say satisfactory preliminary results. He had satisfactory preliminary results. He had middle, lower, and high, very high, middle, low, high. As I've said before, at the normal rate of speech, we often level out these first two elements, level out the accents. So we get, he received satisfactory preliminary results. Say it with me. Satisfactory preliminary results. Say it with me again, enunciating carefully. Satisfactory preliminary results. Let's do one more. We have a, a simple modification structure. Supplementary. Courses. Courses is the modified element so it must be higher. Supplementary courses. What do we have here? Supplementary? Well, we have another example of the heavy syllable. A-R-Y normally calls for the accent to come in the second syllable before. So 
that would be something like, um, let's see now. So you have, well, suppose this is the suffix ary. This is the syllable immediately before it. And then the second syllable before it. Well, it follows the rule. Necessary. But why do we have, why don't we have supplementary or something like that? Well, it's because the first syllable before the suffix ary is a heavy syllable. You have a consonant, a light vowel, and then another consonant. So the syllable is not meh. The syllable is men. That's a heavy syllable. So we have supplementary. All right, never mind that. The point is, the main point is that we have supplementary courses. Well, suppose we have another kind of course, remedial courses, remedial courses, remedial courses. Well, that's a modification structure. Let's make sure that that's clear. Remedial courses. Well, what kind of remedial courses? Well, these are not just remedial courses. These are the supplementary ones. So you would have supplementary, remedial, and courses where supplementary modifies all of this. Now, this is already a modified structure. Now, what that should give you logically is this. supplementary remedial courses going from lower to middle to higher. And as I said before, we can do that, but we don't like the sound of that very much. So we can invert it. We can invert it like this. Supplementary remedial courses supplementary remedial courses. But as I've said already several times, at the normal rate of speech, we will simply level out these two here, giving you supplementary remedial courses. Supplementary remedial courses. Let's complicate it even more. Suppose it's not courses, it's English courses. Here you go. English courses. It's a compound. Let's make sure that it's really clear that that syllable is higher. English courses. As you know, English courses. Those, those are the words independently with their dictionary accents. But if we put them together, as a compound, a new word, which is a compound, the accent on courses will level out, it will become lower. So English courses will become English courses. Now, all of this, this compound here is modified by remedial. Fine, that shouldn't be a problem. That'll give you remedial English courses, because remember, the modifier is going to be lower than the modified element. Fine. Remedial English courses. Suppose we have another modifier coming before. It modifies all of this here. Well, that'll give you something like this. Supplementary remedial English courses. Middle, lower, higher. As before, these elements here 
may level out when you're speaking at the normal rate. So that could give you, repeat this with me, please. Supplementary remedial English courses. <laughs> Now let's say it again. Say it again this time with slow and careful enunciation. Supplementary remedial English courses. Isn't that easy? Finally, we have this exercise here. I will go through this rapidly. You have modification, unnecessarily complex. Unnecessarily Complex versus compounding. An apartment complex. An apartment complex. Here we have complex and here we have complex. Well, why is that? Well, complex, sorry. <laughs> Complex, complex is an adjective, which is related to the word complex. However, complex is a noun. We have a few words like that in English. For example, insult. That's a noun. An insult. But the verb exists as well. There's a verb that goes with this word. Well, related to it. I don't know which came first, the verb or the noun. Um, don't insult. Insult me, don't insult me. The accent is moved. So insult, insult. Well, it's the same kind of thing that's happening here. Complex, that's a noun. Complex is an adjective. An apartment complex, is a, is a compound. Unnecessarily complex is a modification structure. Modification in which this modifier intensifies this adjective. It's not just complex, it's unnecessarily complex. Let's look at the other ones quickly. Here is a modification structure. This is a device, and the device is innovative, or I consider it innovative. That's what we call modification of evaluation, because evaluation is subjective. You think that something is, in, is innovative, so that's the kind of modification that it is. That's the kind of modification structure that it is. Innovative device. An innovative device. Now, the word device, device here and device here, they're both nouns. That's not what's happening. Here you have what looks like a monitor. 
it is a device that is monitoring something else. Actually, that's not exactly what it means. It means a device that is for monitoring, a device for monitoring. Now, when you have a modifier and a noun with that kind of meaning, it often gives you a compound. That's when the modification structure is reinterpreted as a compound and therefore pronounced as a compound. So what you get is a a monitoring device. A monitoring device. Let's look at the other ones. Well, here we have an ordinary X particle Y construction, the internet of things. Therefore, things must take a stronger accent. The internet of things. Don't be afraid to, to pronounce it clearly. The internet of things. How about here? Things on the internet. It's another X particle Y construction. And again, the Y must be higher than X. Things on the internet. Things on the internet. Here we've got two modification structures. And the only difference between them is that, suppose it's an X, Y compound. Uh, sorry, an X, sorry. An X, Y modification structure where Y is either chores or appliances. Now what's the difference between chores and appliances? Chores is one syllable. Appliances is four syllables. Let's see if there's a difference between these two. The modifier of chores and the modifier of appliances in both cases is a compound. Household. Household, well, it doesn't look like a compound because this word hold doesn't exist independently in very many contexts anymore. But to us in our brains, household is a compound and it's pronounced as such. It's written together, it's not written like this. It's written together, household. So what kind of chores? He's doing some household chores. So chores definitely take the stronger accent. Appliances. What kind of appliances? Well, there are appliances for the household, but it's not like here, a monitoring device, a device which is for doing something, for monitoring. Here, this is, these are appliances which are for, not for doing something, but they're for a place. They're for a, a context or a place, let's say. So you get household appliances. Household appliances. Can't get them to fit in. Then. Household appliances. So that's modification by a compound. How do we mark it? Household appliances. Well, we have a nice up, down, down, up, down. So you see, the rhythm is going up, down, up, down, up, down. So the accents don't need to change anywhere. The basic rules apply. 
compounds are up down and modification is down up. So what that gives you as a result is something like middle, low, high, household chores. Middle, low, high, household appliances. Well, let's see about security systems. Well, systems, systems which are for guaranteeing security are security systems. That's the typical meaning of a compound. So security systems is the compound that we want. Security systems. Now, we could also have systems which are of a certain kind. For example, they might be online. Well, I'm pronouncing online, but when I put online together as a compound, and it's a compound used as a modifier, I have online. I have online. But let's, let's see why that is. Let's see why that is. Normally, we would have online. Normally. And then we'd have systems. So all of this should be lower than this. We can have that. We can have online systems, but as I said before, we don't like the sound of that. Low, middle, high, we don't like that. We don't like that one bit. And so, as before, this is a simple example, we invert the accent pattern of the first member giving us online. It'll be written like this. And it gives us online systems. The modifier is a compound. Well, it has compound pronunciation. And the modified element starts this is the problem you see, it starts with the accentuated syllable. So if we want to avoid that middle, or sorry, low, middle, high, we have to invert the accent of the first element. So it gives you online systems, spoken at normal rate, at, a norm, at the normal rate, you won't hear the difference between on and line. You hear online systems, online systems. If you speak a bit more slowly, you'll hear the difference, you'll hear online systems. Well, how about hotlines? Well, a hotline, that's always a compound. Like online, that can be an adjective, but there's no hotline, at least not as far as I know. There is a hotline. It's usually spelled like this, but I'm separating it so that we can follow what we're doing. So here's a compound that modifies a noun by itself. Well, that gives you a hotline number, but hotline number creates another compound. In other words, it's a compound in which the first member is itself a compound. So how do you do that? Very simple. This accent here is uh, suppressed. So you could say it's a hotline number. But we don't normally say that. Speaking at normal speed, we'll say hotline number hotline number, these three syllables on the same level. And this one here, let's make it really clear now. 
will often be obviously higher. So is there a hotline number? No, there's no hotline number. Too bad. Embedded systems. Embedded systems. Well, modification, embedded systems. There, that was easy. Security systems. Security systems. Online security systems. And suppress that accent so that we get middle, high, low. Online security systems. Security systems. You see, these are all on the same level. Online security systems. It's a modified compound. Suppose we complicate our lives a bit further. We have online security systems. But these online security systems are embedded. Well, we could do it in two ways. We could have embedded higher. Higher than online, giving us embedded online security systems. Or we could read all of these here, right up to here, all these syllables on the same middle level. Embedded online security systems. Of course, this accent here will be suppressed. Embedded online security systems. Middle, 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 high, low. Embedded, embedded online security systems. Embedded systems. That's just modification. Systems in retail, X particle Y. How about hmm, embedded systems in retail? That's not really very complicated at all. We got embedded, we have embedded systems. So we know that it has to be embedded systems, lower, higher. And we also know that all of this has to be lower than this. Quite easy in this case. Giving us embedded systems in retail. Embedded systems in retail. This gives us, let's say, middle, higher, highest. Embedded systems in retail. Now, we don't like that very much. So we might invert it. Invert those first two members. Giving us embedded systems in retail. And make it clear, okay? Let me make this really clear. Embedded systems in retail. Embedded systems in retail. So you have something like middle, lower, and higher. And again, as before, we like to level out those accents before the higher one in speech, at normal speed. So we'll say, Embedded systems in retail. Say it with me. Embedded systems in retail. 
say it slowly and carefully, embedded systems in retail. We've almost finished here. Now we should talk about the tags quickly. Rising and falling tags. All you need to learn how to do is to recognize the tags as rising or falling. Everything else should fall into place. I've given you a little bit of context for each of these tags so that you can understand the difference in meaning amongst them. There are five types. I will read them for you now. Listen and repeat. A. Tag questions are new to you too, aren't they? The internet is new to you too, isn't it? You have your charger, don't you? That was, uh, those were rising tags. And the tags were in the neck, were, were negative. Notice that I used the question mark to indicate the rising tag. I like to use the exclamation mark to indicate the falling tag. Let's look at those. Tag questions are new to you too, aren't they? The internet is new to you too, isn't it? You have your charger, don't you? Notice that, again, the tags were in the negative, but they were falling. That was the only difference between the tags of A and the tags of B. You'll notice, if you take a look at the contexts, that the meanings are completely different. Let's look at C now. C. Tag questions aren't new to you too, are they? The internet isn't new to you too, is it? You don't have your charger, do you? These tags were rising, but they were positive. The negation was in the main clause instead of in the tag. All right, let's look at D. D is the same as C, except that, see the exclamation mark? Except that the tag is falling now. So, tag questions aren't new to you either, are they? Notice that you can't have the word to here. You have to have the word either. The internet isn't new to you either, is it? You don't have your charger either, do you?
And finally, for E, we have tags that are that have positive main clauses and positive tags. And they're all rising. That's what the mean, that's what the uh, question mark means. So uh, tag questions are new to you too, are they? So, the internet is new to you too, is it? So, you have your charger, do you? <laughs>